I'm going to show you how to draw uh, whiskers on top of bar plots. Whiskers and uh, error bars in general uh, can be used to indicate the uncertainty of the mean calculation uh, in your sample. Uh, error bars with whiskers can indicate uh, the standard error of the mean very commonly, but it can also be used to uh, visualize the confidence interval. And we're going to do that uh, in this homework um, um, for both SEM and for CI. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to produce the SEM on top of a bar plot. Bar plot. Uh, so in uh, our case, uh, homework seven is just a continuation of homework six in terms of the data. So make sure you load your data frame. You need to make sure that your filters are in place and you've got your SEM calculations correctly defined. So you've got an SEM for your routine and you've got an SEM for your follow-up data. And once all of these variables have been loaded, then you're ready to move on to produce a bar plot and draw the SEM on top of it. So in order to produce our bar plot, uh, I'm just going to do a very simple one, but uh, I know that I've asked you to uh, add uh, fancy arguments to make it look good and uh, legible. Uh, so for us, we need to produce the bar plot with our routine uh, mean, and we need the... Um, uh, the follow-up mean. Uh, now these have been defined for me earlier on uh, in, in order to, I'm just going to recalculate it here for reference. Uh, we need the uh, routine data in here. Uh, so we're going to put the routine uh, data frame with our number of non-critical incidents and the same for, um, for follow-up. like so. So our means have been defined, therefore you're ready to produce your bar plot. Now one particular argument that is necessary here uh, is uh, a y limiter um, just to make sure that the top of our uh, whisker and the bar plot is visible and it's not out of view. So I'm just going to increase our uh, y max to 1.2. Uh, you will see in a moment why. Um, now we're ready to uh, create our bar plot uh, and draw the, the, the error bars on top of it. Now, before we do that, there's one additional change we need to make to this bar plot. We need to assign our bar plot to a variable, which is kind of a weird thing to do. But when we do that, and I'm just gonna call, call, call this variable uh, graph.midpoint. When I do this, uh, I'm going to, and I'm just going to output two value, the values that this variable contains. It contains the value 0.7 and 1.9. These are uh, X values indicating where the midpoint of these uh, bar plots are. So 0.7 is this line here, and uh, 1.9 is going to be this line. So if you count out from, from the left side, towards the right, 0 0.7 is this area here and uh, uh, 1.9 is this area. And so that will be helpful for us when we draw arrows, arrows on top of the bar plot. And so these, this uh, uh, function arrows is always used in conjunction with some kind of a plot, bar plot uh, or, uh, or just a regular plot. Uh, and it allows you to draw, graphically draw an arrow of any kind on top of your, um, on top of your visualization. Now, in our case, this arrow is going to be a really fancy arrow. It's not going to have arrow bars, but instead it's going to have the flat lines, the whiskers. And so we're going to have to style it as such. And we're going to have to uh, tell where the arrow starts and where the arrow ends. So our first argument in this arrow function is going to be where the uh, arrow should start. And so what we're going to do is just to imagine visually, we're going to create a starting point for our somewhere here, and it's going to stop somewhere here. And the same thing for this bar, it's going to start somewhere here, and it's going to stop somewhere up here. And so uh, we need to define this dynamically for our, uh, for our uh, function. And so in each of these cases, the starting 
x value, so when we draw, imagine that we have this space here, we need to specify an x value, as in how much to the right to go, and we need a y value, how much down we should go uh, in our in our uh, value. So graph dot midpoints, uh, and uh, here we're going to specify our mean, our routine mean. So we need the routine mean, and we're gonna take away, we're gonna minus out our routine dot sem from this. So we're gonna start from not the mean, but below the mean by the value of the SEM. And we're going to uh, do the same thing for the follow-up, minus the SEM. And where is the arrow gonna end? It's still going to go, it's, it's a vertical line, so we're still gonna go on the graph midpoints. And uh, instead of minus, we're gonna add the routine SEM to this now. And the same thing for the follow-up SEM. Um, sorry, this is incorrect. It's a follow-up. Follow-up dot SEM. And here too. Follow-up dot SEM. And finally, we're going to do it. And don't worry about too much about this. This is going to change the styling of our, um, of our arrow. So we're going to make sure that it has a, a particular styling of 0.05. It's going to have an angle of 90, so it's completely vertical. And it's going to have a code 3, which changes the arrow bar from the regular triangle arrow to a, a flat line. So when I run this, uh, it just simply draws the arrow bars on us. So imagine that our arrow goes from below to the top over there. And that's the arrow bar uh, using the SEM 